What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Hope everyone's having a good day. Just going to do a quick upload here today. Um, we'll have a lot of stuff coming up for you soon. Tomorrow is September 1st. I've been stockpiling scripts. So come September, you guys can expect the video at least every other day. I might be doing like quick uploads like the one I'm doing today, unscripted in between. So you could be getting an upload every day from me. But um, I just... It was real busy in August. My, you know, my kids were still off on summer vacation, but now they're back in school, and I'm just ready to let some things go. Before I get going on today's video, though, I just real quick, um, if anybody can help me out, I have the script for Jimmy Lamoli like 90% written. I don't have one picture of the man. There isn't any images online that I can find of him. So if there's anyone out there listening. If you know somebody that might have a picture, or you can find any type of picture or lead me in a direction to find a picture of Mr. Lamoli. I really don't want to do a video without one photograph of the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if somebody can help me out with that, please hit up my comments. Uh, I can give you my email. You can send me my email or any way possible uh, that I can get some, you know, photos of this man. So I titled this video the gang territory of Essex County. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some other things. Um, a lot of um, interest in like, the videos that I've done about the Asian gangs of Lowell, the original one like, that was titled Cambodian gangs. And then I just did a recap about that like big federal RICO case that was just like, it was literally a week after I released the video about the Cambodian gangs of Lowell. And then there was another massive federal case. I thought that was kind of coincidental but it was kind of cool because it's it, it means like the content i'm doing the topic is, is relevant it's it's still you know very obviously it was a still like an ongoing situation low with the asian gangs so it, it hasn't stopped at all so i want to do more videos I, i've been doing predominantly a lot of videos just about like the mob and mafia stuff um stuff from back in history and things from that are more uh you know present times but I, I want to talk a little, do more videos about gangs and, and especially gangs in Essex County and different specific things that have happened, situations and stuff. I'm currently, I'm just about finished with my script for MS-13. I've never done a video about MS-13, most likely because there's so much stuff in the media about MS-13 nationally and everything. But like most things that I do videos on, there's nothing really on YouTube or the internet about MS-13 in the Boston area, and they're extremely, extremely active in this area. Like, I was researching it, and I couldn't believe the amount of things. And almost every couple of years, like, the feds have done a massive, like, takedown to try to clean MS-13 out, and as soon as they do, they come back, like, even harder every time. And that's what predominantly the video that I'm going to do is about, is about the latest wave of MS-13. And it's just... Uh, they, they're one of the few gangs that really do live up to all the hype around them. And I kind of just stayed away from doing a video about them because I just feel like there's so much out there about them. But there's not, I mean, besides newspaper articles and headlines and stuff like that about them in the Boston area and like some of the gruesome things that they've done, there's no videos or anything that I can really, that, that I know about that, I, unless I'm wrong and missing something big here, that I, they're, they're really, there isn't much stuff about them video-wise. So um, I'm very excited about doing the, the script is almost done. I'm probably going to release a different video tomorrow. I have another script that's, that's, that's been waiting to do for a while. So I'll probably release that one tomorrow and then the MS-13 one will come after it, but definitely keep your eyes open for that one. That's going to be a good one. I, I hope, uh, YouTube won't demonetize it. They've been demonetizing a lot of my stuff lately, but I've been kind of like careless about the way I've been presenting it. Like I've been talking very loosely about uh, weapons and, and and narcotics and showing pictures of like switches and stuff like that. And obviously I, I, I'm not stupid. I know YouTube doesn't want you to do that. So I wasn't shocked like when the last couple of videos I've done have been demonetized. But like I always say, that's not the reason I'm doing this. I, I work full time as a commercial clam digger and that's how I pay my bills. I don't like make videos to make money. I did it. I started doing it as a hobby and it still really is just a hobby. And a lot of people enjoy watching my videos. And that just kind of gives me the initiative to keep doing it, you know. Anyways, if you guys can notice the sound quality on this video is I hope, I hope better than it was a lot of people used to shit on the, the she sound quality but I have my brand new microphone plugged in and I'm using it for the first time and I'm very proud of myself that I got this technology working 
because I still have a bunch of technology in my closet still that's basically unused. But this microphone hopefully will make my voice sound clear and not so, you know, rickety or whatever. People just didn't like the way. Basically, I think what people used to show me most for was like playing music off my phone and recording it onto the videos. But now I can't even do that because YouTube doesn't, they won't let you play like any type of music. They You have like certain music that you can get from the creator studio. And I should probably start doing that and make myself like another intro with music and stuff like that. But so let's talk about what the title is, Gangs of Essex County. So in Essex County, there's like basically two main cities that centralized like, gang activity in the county. So when I'm talking about Essex County, Essex County is basically northeast of Boston. It's like the north shore of Boston. It goes all the way from uh, Lynn and Salem, which is like the southern boundaries, all the way north up to Newburyport and Salisbury to the New Hampshire border, and then like west to Haverhill, Lawrence, on the Merrimack Valley. Um, on the New Hampshire border in, in that direction. So directly west is Middlesex County, and that's, you know, they go to Bill Ricca Jail, and those are the cities uh, northwest of Boston. Um, and then you have Suffolk County directly south, uh, and that's Boston itself, and, like, cities directly right around Boston, you know. So, like I said, the two main cities that centralize in gang activity in Essex County are Lynn, in the south, and then Lawrence in like the northwest in Merrimack Valley. Two similar cities, but but very different also. They're both, what they have in common is the fact that they're both old industrial mill cities, and you can see that when you go into them. Um, Lynn was well known for their United Shoe Factory. They had a huge shoe factory, and my yaya, my grandmother, actually worked there, and she was like one of the first female foremans there. I guess she worked as a foreman when all the guys were in World War II, and then when they came back, they tried to demote her, and she was like, hey, I did the job while all the guys were gone in the war. I can do it now. And they were like, she just wouldn't basically take no for an answer. She was a feisty little one, and that was like a big deal back then for a woman to be a, you know, in a position of power, I guess. So the shoe, when you go into Lynn today, a lot of these old industrial, like, mill buildings, I, I think they're beautiful. I love that architecture. Like, if you pull up on the train in Lynn, there's certain buildings and stuff, they're like... They're like built around the streets. They're shaped funny. They're not built in like squares and stuff. They're built at funny angles and stuff like that. And they have all these beautiful like graffiti murals and stuff on the buildings. I think that's beautiful. I think that adds to the city. I think it, I think it makes it more beautiful. I don't think that's I, it's art to me. I love that. I love walking around downtown Lynn and uh, well, not necessarily. I don't necessarily love walking around downtown Lynn, but it is like it it it, it adds to it. it. Makes it prettier. You know, it doesn't take away from anything. That's for, for sure. And so that's the thing that Lawrence and Lynn have in common. Lawrence is right on the Merrimack Valley. It's an old industrial city. There's a bunch of old, beautiful, I think, beautiful mill buildings. Like downtown Lawrence is actually kind of pretty, like where the commons are and stuff like that. And like over by the New Balance factory. Um, Lawrence isn't like an ugly town. It's just, there's just a lot of drugs and a lot of, it's become, you know, since the 1970s, I believe, it's become just like a heroin hub. Um, it's always been known for heroin, like, Back in the 90s, uh, before heroin was widespread, like it, it like well, now there's no heroin around anywhere, but before it was like all widespread in basically every community, Lawrence was like the place people used to go. And up until, I think it still is this way, all the states in northern uh, New England, like New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, they travel to Lawrence to get their drugs. Now it's probably easier to get in these states you know than it used to be but for sure in the 1990s and in the early 2000s people used to drive from new hampshire vermont maine from cities there and especially people who like guys who were selling it or addicts that were addicted and supporting their habits through selling selling drugs they would make the trip sometimes to lawrence twice a day they're take, making like three to four hour round trips twice a day to go re-up, uh, you know, probably grab like a couple fingers of dope, like a finger of dope is like 10 grams. They're probably grabbing a couple of those going back to their city and, and making, you know, 40 and 50 bags or doing whatever they do if they're selling. It used to be like back in the day, it used to be bundles, little glassine bags, like 10 bags in a bundle. But then they started when everybody started switching over from doing OCs and sniffing the dope and stuff in the early 2000s, they started selling like half grams, grams, 50 bags, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know how I know all this stuff, but... Um, <laughs> Anyway, so those are the two main the two main cities that um the gang 
culture surrounds in Essex County. Uh, there's cities that surround them that have a certain amount of gang activity too, like in the South. So, so Lynn goes by the nickname. They, I don't know if people call it Sin City, but it, the the thing was always Lynn, Lynn, the city of sin. You never go out the way you came in. And like my my dad lived in Lynn. He grew up uh, lived in like Dorchester and Columbia Point House and projects till like he was like six or seven. And they moved to Lynn. They bounced around Lynn, but he he went there and went to high school in Lynn. Went to Lynn English. And uh, that's where he lived like most of his life. I still have relatives that live in Lynn, and I'm very like um, I'm very familiar with Lynn. Like I know Lawrence. I've been to Lawrence. I, I've been to this farm in Lawrence several times. Um, I've driven around Lawrence, but I never really went to Lawrence to hang out. I never like did stuff up there. Uh, I lived in Haverhill next door. I'll talk about that in a little bit about the city of Haverhill. But let's just talk about uh, Lynn and like Southern Essex County. So Lynn has just been like kind of a a hub for. I would say Lynn is prob. It's tough to go back and forth, which is which is like the worst city, or which is like the tougher city, or which has more, which sees more active. There's a big rivalry between these two cities, especially like in the county jail, because th these two cities are the most well represented cities in in, in Middleton Jail. Obviously, they're the two biggest cities with like the two biggest gang, uh, you know, the numbers of gang members, and it, the most most active city is Nassau County by far. So, um. Uh, Lynn has been, since the 80s, gang culture has been thriving in Lynn. Uh, there's all different kinds of gangs in Lynn. There's, there's uh, traditional, you know, Latin kings, gangster disciples. Uh, after the 2000s, the Bloods and the Crips started making a big presence in Lynn. Um, I know there used to be a big set called the Avenue King Crips in Lynn. Wow. Maybe like, maybe like Rolling 20s. There's, there's several different cliques. Uh, so hit, hit me up in the comments and... This is the kind of stuff I need help with, guys, because I haven't really been to jail much in the past, um, you know, 10, 15 years. So I don't know a lot of the stuff that's going on with the gang politics. I, I don't live in these communities, so I don't know, like, a lot of, like, the, what's, who are, like, the major players now. Like, so please hit me up in the comments. YouTube's been, like, erasing a lot of my comments that people have been leaving me. And it's kind of aggravating. Like, I saw... This guy from Lawrence left me, a, I think his name was Yemo Slice, and he left me a comment. I saw him an email, and then when I went to like, respond to it, it was like erased on YouTube. I don't, so I don't know if he, if people, I'm pretty sure it's like YouTube is doing it, but he was trying to like give me some information about uh, like the video I did about the gangs of Lawrence. And he was saying, I think you missed a lot of stuff from 2010 till present. And I, I wanted to respond to him and say, oh, I'm absolutely sure I did that. Most of the stuff I was talking about was like in the early 2000s, late 90s. Like I really don't know a lot of the current stuff. So if people want to hit up the comments and help me out with that, I, I very much appreciate that. So like I was saying, so Lynn, Lynn for the most part, like they got Bloods, they got Crips. Uh, like I said, Avenue King Crips used to be a big set. I don't know if they're like non-existent anymore. Latin Kings, Gangsta Disciples. Um, I don't know if the Trinitarios have a presence in, in Lynn. I, I, they're huge in Lawrence, but I don't know about in Lynn if they are. I know there's Dominican people living in Lynn. It's not as dominant as a population as the Dominican population in Lawrence. So um, MS-13 had the Psychos Locals Salvatrucha. I talk about them in my video and the brutal murder that they committed in a park in Lynn left the kid's body there just to be discovered by people. Um, so you got Latin gangs, you got black gangs, you got Asian gangs, uh, there's white gang members in Lynn. Lynn's a very, um, racially mixed city. There's, there's a little bit of everything in the city of Lynn. Lawrence is more of a dominant Latino city. I think something crazy, like almost like 85 or 90% of the population in Lawrence is, is Hispanic and predominantly Dominican now. Um, so another city next to Lynn, uh, is Salem and Salem Overall, it's a pretty nice city. It's very historic. Like almost a million people come there every October for Halloween for part of the like the haunted happenings that happen there because they had the witch, the witch trials and all a lot of different stuff. So downtown is kind of spooky, you got a little gothic thing going, and they really do it up for for Halloween. And then there's nice like suburban neighborhoods in Salem as well. But then there's this one neighborhood, and if you're from the North Shore area, everybody knows about the Point. And the Point is you could be in any large if you're sitting in the point you could not know that you're in salem you could think you're in any other large city like it's it's just it's a bad neighborhood uh, i don't know what it's like now i haven't been there in a while in high school i had a friend that lived like right on lafayette street she lived like going more we live like right past the point like if you keep driving down lafayette street past the point you end up going to salem state ends up getting really nice and he lived like in a nice house but literally two blocks away was like the point 
And to walk to the Wendy's, like downtown, like over by Pickering Wharf, you got to like, you had to basically walk through the point. And I remember like some kid like pulled a knife on us one night, it was, like at nine o'clock at night when we were like 14 or 15 walking. And just like the point is just it, like it's a bad neighborhood. And, and there's a lot of gang activity, the huge drug market that goes on there. So there are some cities like in Essex County that have like certain little neighborhoods that are just as like active and ghetto as anywhere else. You know what I mean? Even though they're positioned around other like nicer, wealthier communities. Like for the most part, there's no gang activity. Once you get past uh, Salem and I don't even think there's anything going on in Beverly anymore. They've cleaned up Beverly so much. Like the downtown area has become like a real like hipster kind of used to be able to get an apartment in Beverly for like 500 bucks. Now it's, you know, you, you can't get anything for under $3,000. It's a real come like everywhere else on the North Shore, it's become real uppity real fast. Uh, like Gloucester, there was never any really gang culture in Gloucester. Like, there's like a couple public housing uh, projects. There's like Riverdale Park and Maplewood Park. And back in the day, there would be people that would come and stay with like some, some chick living there and like sell drugs out of her apartment. And they'd be from like Boston or maybe out of state, like New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. And they would have like legit gang uh affiliations or be legit gang members and they would maybe try to spread the doctor and tell people about it and maybe like try to click up a couple people but it never really stuck in like a small town like Gloucester that's like 99.9 percent .9 white it's and especially the way it is now maybe in the 90s and early 2000s when it was still like a little bit rougher and there's still like a little more of like it used to be more of like a drug city a lot of people used to sell drugs in here people would come from out of town to get drugs here and stuff like that but it's not like that anymore. I mean, they've really gentrified any city that had any type of like seediness to it in in the North Shore. And just they, everything's so like so crisp and clean up here now. It's like they, if there's any type of like gang activity or drug activity, it's rooted out so quick now. Like so, like I said, basically anything north of Salem, there's there's really nothing going on. Um, I mean, I think there was like some kids. So, like, when you go up northern, like, to the very northern part of uh, Essex County, when you have, like, New Report, which is a really uppity town, and, like, Salisbury, which used to be kind of more like, uh, I'm not going to say white trash, but yeah, more like white trash than New Report. Um, and, and Amesbury next to it, I think there was, like, some gangs that used to try to spread more from, like, Lawrence and Haverhill area, though, like, into Amesbury and Salisbury and stuff. And I think that they tried to start some sets and stuff up there, but, like it's the same thing all over Essex County, basically. It's like these little tiny pockets where it's still like stuff going on. But for the most part, it's so gentrified and so upper class and like uppity. It's, it's ridiculous. Like even somebody like me, who's just a commercial fisherman who works my ass off. Like, I can't, I'm not going to be able to live here much longer anymore. It's like, you're either going to be super rich or like, um, I don't mean to say like poor enough, but like to be able to get like a housing voucher, to be able to qualify to get a housing voucher, it's the only way you're going to be able to live around here anymore. It's just, it's, it's a shame, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. So then, so that's basically like, I need people to help me out, comment, uh, tell me about stuff that's going on Lynn. I'm going to talk about Lynn in my MS 13 video. So I don't want to get into too much about that. And I don't want to like say stuff that's not right. Uh, like I said, I, just, I named off like the major gangs that operate there and have traditionally operated there. And oh, the Deuce Boys all were also a big gang back in like the 90s and early 2000s that operated out when they were like a mixed race gang. They had a lot of Asian members, I believe. And they, uh, I don't know if they're still around today, if they're even still like a gang or if they're active or not. And then moving into the Merrimack Valley, into Lawrence. Lawrence is obviously the most active city. But you have also in the Merrimack Valley. In the Essex County, because Lowell is also, like I've talked about in a couple of videos about the Asian gangs of Lowell, but Lowell's Middlesex County. Lowell's not Essex County. So, I mean, there are some Asian gangs in Essex County, but mostly, like, around, like, the Lynn area. And there's also, like, Asian blood gangs and, I don't I'm sure, different uh, types of Asian gangs in Revere and East Boston. But those, that's not Essex County, though. But, like, sure, off of Shirley Ave and, and Revere, there's a real big, like, Cambodian Vietnamese community. And there's a lot of gangs around there and in East Boston as well. So East Boston, Revere, uh, Chelsea, that area, it's mostly Central American, like 8th, 18th Street, um, MS-13, and then these different Asian gangs. It's mostly Latino and Asian gangs. There's not really any black gangs in those cities. There, there might be black members of those gangs, but they're not. Um, what was it actually? 
when I was reading about with the MS-13, there was like a black kid in his last name. He had like a Spanish first name, but his last name was like Duggins. So I don't know if he was like from Honduras because there's some black guys in, in Gloucester that are from Honduras and they speak fluent Spanish. And it's confusing because they're like black, but they speak fluent Spanish. But they're from Honduras. So he, he might be from Honduras. Well, he just might be a black kid that was, you know, living in Chelsea or whatever and joined up with the gang. But, but like I said, that's Suffolk County. That's not Essex County. So let's not talk too much about that. So then going up into the Merrimack Valley, you have Lawrence, which is like the hub, and then Haverhill's next to it, which is also a very uh, rough city. And then you have Methuen to a certain extent. Now, Haverhill and Lawrence, you can tell when you drive into those cities that they're old industrial, like they're cities with like rough areas and stuff. Methuen's not really like that. Methuen's more like suburban, but there's a big Hispanic population in Methuen because it's right next to Lawrence. And... Um, there's a lot of drug activity. Like a lot of people sell drugs and a lot of people like come to Methuen to buy drugs. There's not as much heat like in, the, in Methuen as there is like in Lawrence. Lawrence is like a, it's, it, it's a, there's a lot of heat in that sea. There's cops everywhere. As soon as you drive into the sea, you see cops, unmarked like detectives, like marked cruisers, they're everywhere. And they're clocking out of state license plates. Like first off, first off, if you're white, they're thinking, what are you doing in Lawrence? Not to be racist, but they, they do. They're like, what, this white person coming to Lawrence most likely to try and buy drugs. Especially if you're white and you have a New Hampshire license plate, a Vermont license plate, a Vermont uh, Maine license plate, then like the cops are like gonna they're gonna be up your ass basically. Like Lawrence is it's just been a narcotics hub for since like probably the late seventies, you know, and these ga different gangs started setting up in the nineties, like the the gangsta disciples, the Latin Kings. Uh, the outlaws started like in the, I believe late '90s, early 2000s, and all these gangs vie for territory and like for drug proceeds. And then the the Trinitarios came in a big way in the like I believe like in the later part of the 2000s, 2010s. And as far as I know, they're the dominant gang in Lawrence still. If people can help me out if this is not true, uh, I got some good tips from a viewer. Hit me up in the comments. Telling me about a struggle that was happening between the GDs and the Trantarios in the city of Haverhill and about a specific kid's murder. And I should kind of dig into that. It gave me some leads and I appreciate that. So th shout out to the, whoever uh, that was. A f sorry if you know what your username was. But I'm definitely going to look into that because that's very interesting. I used to live in Haverhill for like six months. I lived on Winter Street, um, the big brick building across from Bradford Seafood, which is like a very active neighborhood. Like right behind me was like Nichols Street. And then the Acre was up a little bit beyond me, which is huge uh gang activity and then you go down to the bottom winter street underneath like the overpass bridge there where like the tedeschi was and that little plaza and then up the hill is high street which is another notorious like washington like the upper part of washington street and uh high street big gang neighborhood a lot of activity going on there. there's a couple murders in the past uh, few years that have happened over there so i would like to do a video about that as well but like haverhill is goes by Helltown, and like i don't know like it, i some people shit on Haverhill and stuff, but I lived there for a little while, and I thought Haverhill was a pretty rough city. It's, you know, definitely, I don't know, definitely bigger and, and rougher than growing up in Gloucester, that's for sure. I can't say it much, but especially now, Gloucester is such, like, it used to be kind of, had a little bit of a rougher edge in the 90s when it was still a fishing town. There was all the dive bars downtown. There's not even, like, one dive bar in the city anymore. It's pathetic. But, um... So anyways, I just wanted to drop a quick up upload here and just do, I've been doing mostly mafia stuff and I, and I want to continue to do more of like the street gang uh, content as well. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Essex County. That's just kind of why I titled this Gangs of Essex County Gang Territory and talked a little bit roughly. I just did like kind of a, a rough outline of different um, territories and gangs that are predominant in different areas of Essex County because it's, it's a lot of stuff. It's not as obviously high profile stuff that happens in in Boston and like out in Springfield and like Holyoke and stuff and and different states like out in California and you can't compare like California and like Chicago and cities like that you can't just compare but still there's no content on YouTube or the internet pretty much in general about this kind of stuff and people comment on my videos all the time and say that kind of stuff so I'm going to continue to make these videos it's always something I've been interested in it's always stuff that I've kind of just researched for no reason just to to pique my interests but like uh, since i've started making videos about this stuff i've gotten mostly positive feedback and so i'm going to continue to do it so like i said september is a big month for my channel I got a lot of stuff coming up i got like four scripts already written ready to do just want to do this one quick upload here on the last day of august just kind of give you guys like a little tip like we got 
MS-13, I got the Jimmy Lamoldi script. I just really want some like artwork with him. I want some, like, some photographs of the man himself. I don't want to sit there and make a whole video about this guy and not have any pictures of him. And also, I need a little bit of help with like his early, early life before he got, you know, connected with stuff and started doing dirt. I want to just talk about like kind of like who he was and like his family a little bit before I talk about like negative stuff. I'd like to like paint both sides of the picture, you know? So we got the Jimmy Lamoli. I got uh, other other mob stuff. Um, I don't want to spoil everything, but just tune in. There's a lot of stuff coming. Um, shout out to, you know, all my guys. Shout out to Chris Andrew again for driving all the way down here from Mansfield. Sorry, I like... I was just so excited about like hanging out with him and like just doing it that I was like talking like over him a lot and I know from how I am that I was just doing that because I was like excited but it just like it just was not a very good interview and I apologize for that I apologize to him but I've already done that but shout out to him shout out to Michael Gill shout out to Ian Heslap shout out to David Fishwick shout out to Tim Bell Shout out to Casey Harris. I, you just had surgery a couple days ago. You've been watching my videos, recouping from your surgery. You had one a little while back, and I think you just had another one a couple days ago. So I hope you're recouping. Hope you're feeling good, Casey. What's up with Chucky O'Neill? You out there, Chucky? You all right, man? I've heard from you in a while. You're making me nervous. Um, who else we got to shout out real quick? Um, Italian Stallion, who's been always commenting on my streams lately. Dave G, what's up, bro? Um, Ryan Brown, Reese Lighten, Michael Veshi, just like Joe Pesci. Uh, shout out to Lori Hill, Pauly Tonzo. Um, hope everyone's doing well. God bless everyone. Like I always say at the end of my videos, remember to make good choices, take good care of yourselves, your family, your loved ones, your fellow human beings. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. God bless everyone.